Good morning. It is Tuesday, April 4th. Um, the wind is blowing. And speaking of the wind, I've, uh, for no good reason, not done this video yet. And I apologize to those who have asked. I've, I've been asked quite a few times, uh, multiple people on different videos about this controller and and just getting uh wind turbines hooked up either to the controller or the rectifier um i know a lot of people you know every pma wind turbine there's a pma right here that uh, shouldn't be a big deal to set that on the batteries yeah so they all got three wires that come out. It's a three-phase alternator with a permanent magnet rotor. As that spins, the magnets pass, pass, one phase at a time, um, but they're all kind of mixed in there. Um, so each phase pulsates a quick jolt of AC. So it sends out AC and it wants to return on that wire it sends up positive and wants to return negative on this wire um, any kind of controller whether it be the cheap little guys that you know you can get for 10 15 bucks they also come with a lot of these uh, wind turbine kits or just a, a straight up and you know, i rectifier this is a an air cooled rectifier this is a solid state um it's got all of its uh, components on the inside and then a big uh plate on the back where you mount it to a heat soak and you know it'll work even better if you have a fan on there to draw that heat off of it or you know a digital charge controller they all are going to hook up exactly the same you got three wires out from your pma you run them down the tower to i like running it to a uh, blade switch three-way blade switch um in the downward position that is engaged in the outward position it completely disconnects all electrical connections between the house and the turbine in the upward position i've actually got wire soldered on the inside of that so that grounds out all three phases and that would act as a brake and they would the, the turbine would come to a stop um so if i was servicing the turbine or raising or lowering the pole i would have it in an upward position um if there was some kind of problem or like a violent um lightning storm i might put it in open just so you know in case the tower gets hit it doesn't blow out any of my electronics down here um but for the i've never had an issue with lightning the pole actually is really well grounded out it's got three enormous earth anchors and uh it's sitting on an earth anchor that goes four feet into the ground and you know i figure i figure that's pretty good grounding um i didn't send a ground wire into the house i didn't want that kind of high voltage interference coming into the house it, it, it it's self-grounded so that's just my opinion that's the way i did it um but as far as the actual wires you know yeah i've got everything kind of nicely color coded that's strictly for appearances sake um it doesn't matter it doesn't matter at all which one of these three phases you put into the three inputs 
you know, a rectifier is the exact same thing. You got your three ends, that's from the PMA, and then you got your, if you look at your little schematic here, come on, focus. You can do it. Come on. What the heck? Well, anyways, this side, there, it's starting to focus. This side is positive, that side's negative. And you can see at the schematic, here's the three poles coming in, and they have diodes on each pole, two diodes. So as the pulse, the electrical pulse comes in from that one, it can't go that way. It can only go this way. So it comes down to the positive line. When the pulse comes in from that one, it can't go that way. So it has to go this way. It wants to get to ground. So it has to go through the load back to ground. And each pole is its own ground because it's AC. And same the third pole can't go that way. It has to go this way. So it goes to this load comes back to ground. So it takes the AC and it literally straightens it out to DC. This side, this side of the rectifier is DC. This side takes the three AC poles and straightens it out. Goes through the road, comes back, and goes back to each phase. That's essentially what this is doing the exact same thing. This is just a rectifier. That's all that is inside of here. It's a rectifier, three phase uh, bridge rectifier, but it's got an internal voltage sense. And when that battery voltage gets up to goal voltage, um, what do we got? Braking voltage. 30 volts for a 24 volt system so when it gets up to goal voltage 30 volts it will ground out it'll basically connect you know it'd be like if i laid a screwdriver right here it would connect all three phases and that will bring the turbine to a stop um so that's you know the absolute most basic charge controller this has no programmability or charge you know controlling at all all that does is take all the power that the pma can make and turns it into dc energy from there <clears throat> you can have a dump load controller where you you know set your uh max and recover voltage Looks like my screen's being a little goofy there, huh? Hey, there she comes. Um, and when you get to your max voltage, it'll then vent any extra power that the turbine is making into a load, either uh, a resistor bank or something, you know, some place that you can uh, make productive use of that DC current. I have this going to my water heater. I have a DC water element in my water uh, water heater. Um, so that helps. In the summertime, along with the solar thermal uh, water heat, that helps to, uh, you know, give us bath water. Um, otherwise, if you don't have something productive to do with it, you can just run it to a resistor bank and that will get hot and kind of act like a space heater. But, uh, you know, they all work the same. See, this rectifier does the exact same thing. This comes from my backup generator, which is out there. I've got a couple videos on that from uh, initial prototyping all the way to four-year review. Um, this is a 300 amp rectifier coming from a dual core thermodyne permanent magnet alternator and that thing throws like <laughs> all the watts I want it to um, I've got a preset for about 2,000 watts and that just dumps amps back into the batteries and recharges them 
but essentially that's how they all work you, you know you got your three wires from your turbine hook them up however it works out it doesn't matter what color they are um you know if they're pink blue purple green doesn't matter three wires from the turbine three wires to your charging source um internally and the controller this is the exact same thing except it's a little smarter and it's got variable resistors that can put more or less load on the turbine itself if they go real high resistance it'll still pull a little trickle of power through but in like low wind or turbulent wind it'll it'll take some of that resistance off of the controller and allow it to keep on spinning that's that's where the mppt you know smart controller function gets really cool because it'll allow it to keep on spinning and stay in the wind instead of veering out because of that wind wall that forms in front of the blades and if it's turbulent wind or not real straight line strong wind the tail rudder will allow the turbine to veer out and also the mpp T function it helps boost low rpm uh, power generation by raising the volts from the incoming turbine and then it also helps it stay in the wind by limiting what actually comes through it doesn't load the turbine down so hard which makes it want to slow down and wind wall um, it allows it to just spin and then when the gusts get hard it's already in the wind and it just then you can see the power come in um what do i got here i was hoping to be able to show you how to program this thing using the computer because i would still like to be able to program my mpp T function and turn the RPM limit up on that a little bit to keep it in the wind even better. But yeah, the wind's blowing. She's making power. She's been going, you know, between 50 and 300 all day, uh, all night last night. For my particular situation, this works fantastic. It helps keep my turbine in the wind. I have really turbulent wind here. I don't get a lot of straight line wind. So this works the best for me. Um, and instead of using brakes, I just use the dump load to keep the voltage from spiking and boiling out my batteries. And uh, that, that's pretty reliable. These I, I also got these from Thermodyne. I did switch out the, the old school solenoid to a solid state uh, relay and um, again another big heat sink on top of that it's just safer uh, I'm not gonna exceed the amperage ratings on that so for for my particular setup this works the best if you're gonna put together wind it absolutely can work in most places but you have to you have to do your research and you got to think about you got to keep an eye on your wind for a while put up a flagpole for goodness sakes and just keep an eye on your wind and you know look at your obstructions and see where that air is going to be eddying behind a big tree and, and what proximity that is to where you're thinking about having a turbine pole um, and you know, even here where I have really turbulent wind, I ripped off the tail fin and I made my own tail fin that was, you know, enormous compared to the, that was a factory fin on one of my turbines. <coughs> There's ways to get them work, to work, but you got to, you know, plan out your components. There's a, there's a lot of ways to skin a cat. Uh, there's a lot of ways to run, you know, to get power from a turbine into your batteries but what is the best for you that's for you to decide and you know you might have to do a little bit of r d 
I, I, I read so many reviews, you know, people on Amazon and all these different websites where you can buy the turbines and different equipment, you know, and they get frustrated and give up and, you know, write a terrible review, um, thinking that we're going to get just non-stop power out of these things. No, wind is inconsistent and it does not move straight, you know, unless the right front is coming through, it, it it's com completely dependent on your location are you high eleva elevation low elevation what kind of trees and buildings do you have around um, getting them hooked up this is the easy part getting them hooked up right where they actually make power that's where you got to do your research and you really got to plan it out correctly before you go spend a ton of money on all the wrong stuff just running rectifiers here didn't work. It, 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 I got power out of them, but I couldn't get consistent power out of them where this thing just rides at nice power ratings. You know, it's, it, it's, it's constantly adjusting itself, trying to keep the most power coming in as possible, taking the load on and off of the turbine to keep it at that high RPM because RPM equals amps. So, um, if there's anything in there that I didn't answer for you, I will try to follow up. Um, I'm sorry I couldn't <sighs> do the programming on the controller. I've tried two different computers and three different cables to try and connect it, two different softwares, five different drivers to try and connect this and get it to work with the old Chinese software. I cannot get it to work. Um, there's multiple versions of this exact same controller. There's only a few sellers that actually sell it with the proprietary cable. There's a proprietary cable that has a software built into the cable. Uh, you plug it in, it installs onto the computer, and you should be able to link up. And actually, you know, there is some adjustments I can do on the interface here, but there's so much more I could use the software program for, and I'm disappointed that I can't do that because this one, did not include the proprietary cable. So, my loss. I'm gonna have to buy another one that's gonna cost me probably a hundred dollars. So, um, other than that, thanks for watching. God bless you.